Wow, what, what a result, what a result. Obviously everyone buzzing about Ronaldo, I'm sorry. I, do you know what, I'm gonna start with a positive. Thank God we got our first three points of the group. Ronaldo coming through clutch. David De Gea is back like he never left. What other positives? Tellez, what a strike. Cavani impact from the bench. And tr still mustering chances in a, in a really, really poor performance. So thank God we got the win. Thank God we, we, we managed to come out of there with the three points. We absolutely needed that. But listen, you guys heard me at halftime when somehow I managed to ring KG. That was awful. It was awful for long, long, long periods. And that is the type of smash and grab performance that when, you, when the elation's done and you, the, 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 the singing stops and you kinda, your, your, your blood pressure goes down, your pulse goes back down, you think, okay, what have I witnessed? Let's break it down, let's dissect it. For long, long periods, we were second best in there tonight. Because we got individual players, because we got fantastic world-class players, we will win games. And we will win games like that. Not sustainable. Not, not sustainable. I would love to just come on here and say, and just, and only be positive, and only be positive. I, I just can't. I just have to look at what it really was today. And that is a moment of brilliance between Bruno and Tellez. May I tell it was having a shocking game. Um, and a moment of brilliance from Ronaldo, who was pretty anonymous all game, but that, that is what he does. That is why we brought him back. We knew, again, that, that when we was on Ronaldo watch, remember the, 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 the day after we signed Ronaldo, a couple of days after Ronaldo, he played against Ireland. Exactly the same thing happened. He was out the game for large, large periods. 85th minute, header. 91st minute, header. Wins the game. That's what Ronaldo's going to do. He's going to come through clutch. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. What I do have a problem with um, is the lack of control of the game is the fact that every time Villarreal picked up the ball, they looked like they were going to score. Dan Juma gave Dallo a torrid time. That's an issue. And obviously when we see that Fred's, um, when we see that Wan-Bissaka's missing, Maguire's missing and Short is missing from the back line, we were always going to struggle. I understand that. So I, I, I'm not, those players don't play very often and we can, and we can potentially see why, but they're not our starting, our starting players. Um, and we felt that today. Every, every single attack that went down our right-hand side, their left-hand side, we looked in trouble. Every, every transition of play from defence to attack from Villarreal, they looked in trouble. Their number 14, I said it at half time, he was just picking up the half spaces between Rafael Varane and Lindelof, or the two centre half, should I say, and the two central midfielders and McTominay and Pogba. And they couldn't get a hold of the game. At times I, I saw Pogba playing really advanced and leaving McTominay by himself. Essentially, that's actually what we want to see, one sitting and two eights, but there needs to be a system with that. It, it felt like it was just thrown together. And the longer the game went on, I'm thinking, this is so bad. Like, the guy next, there was a guy next to me saying, Flex, it looks like we're going backwards. And I don't mean literally by passing the ball backwards and sideways, which is what we were doing for large points. It feels like the team's going backwards. And again, I said it at half time, if we were going to win that game, no matter how we was going to win it, David De Gea would be the man of the match. The saves that he made today were unbelievable. Someone said in the fan views that it was almost like um, David De Gea at, um, at Arsenal in that season, what was it, 16, 17 a season or 15, 16, um, where he made about 14 saves. Not as much as that today and he was beaten in the end, but the, the way he played and the, the saves that he made literally kept us in the game. That could have been three or four nil by half time, a completely different game. And, let's, and again, let's not, let's not kid ourselves here. The free kick, so glad Moreno gave it away. He was chucking it all, all game. Yes, 100% with the Liverpool connections. I'm glad we was on him. But that ball from Bruno to Tellez was fantastic and the strike was unbelievable. That, if they tried that out of 10 times, that probably happens three, two at a push. Luckily it happened for us tonight and that gave us the spur um, to come on. Back to the positives though. Edison Cavani when he came on was absolutely phenomenal. He was infectious. He was, he was infectious on the team and he just lifted, he lifted everyone. And I looked at it and I said to myself and the guy sitting next to me, the guy behind me, I was like, Cavani needs to play more. I don't know how, that's a, that's a, that's a whole nother show, that's a whole nother debate. But you look at the impact that he has. Some people saying in the fan view that actually, no, he's fine coming on as an impact player, then you shift Ronaldo to the left, shift Ronaldo to the right. He will find space, he will find chances. Okay, fair enough, maybe I can, I can, I can accept that. But he needs to play more often. He really does. Um, so what I will say is that he gave us that energy that was missing, that spark. There was a ball that was 
it, from where I was sitting, it looked like a complete lost cause. A complete lost cause, like, don't bother running for it. I think Ronaldo gave up. Cavani thought, fuck that, that's my ball. Kept it in. It gives it, gives it a lift. It gives it a lift. And that's what he done. He was infectious. There it was, it was a chance as well that we created for him. And these are the positives in terms of the fighting spirit to keep going. That definitely is a positive. And what we did do is get the ball into Cavani. Six yards out, head up. Mason Greenwood round the corner. He couldn't quite finish it. But they kept on going. And that's what Ronaldo's going to do as well. He's going to get moments like that where we might not see him for long periods. Bang, goal, wins us the game. I said it. And that is exactly what we're going to see from him. We have to learn that. Paul Pogba today, I said in the fan view, it's like, you know what, really and truly, no matter what midfield we play, there always seems to be an issue. There is no system in place to facilitate different players occupying different positions. And that is a problem. If Liverpool play and Thiago has to come in and play next to Henderson or, or Fabinho needs to come out and, 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 and Oxley chamberlain needs to come in, they play in the same way. If Rodri needs to come out of, of um, City's team and Fernandinho needs to play a game or, or Bernardo Silva needs to come in and play in a three-man midfield, they play the same way. I don't see that with us. And it's a, it's a, it's a recurring theme and it's something that... Listen, this game was, was, no, was not too dissimilar from the game against West Ham. In fact, it was worse in terms of the performance level. It was worse. West Ham didn't rain on us as... as sorry, Aston Villa didn't rain on us as much as Villarreal did at times today. Um, again, the proactiveness of the managers. I see an Emery just like, just like the final. I'm thinking this has shades of the final, but worse. Because it's almost like Villarreal sussed us out from the final and thought, we've got nothing to fear. We've got nothing to fear. Apart from, and even Emery touched on it, we've got fantastic individuals. And if you switch off, you can concede at any moment. And that is what happened. That is what happened. We have a fantastic strike of the boy in Alex Tellers who they left him on the edge of the box and what a goal that was. And we have Ronaldo that, and, and we have David De Gea in net and they're not very clinical. That's the reason we won this game. Other teams playing against stronger opposition, playing against teams that have more quality than Villarreal, would have been, like Aston Villa, would have ended completely different. So listen, there are positives. There's always positives when you win a game. But I think contextually, you have to look at that and say we massively got out of jail. Do I care in the context of the group? No, but I care in the context of the season and the performances. At halftime, honestly, I thought, oh my God, this is, this is, I feel this is going to be a snowball fit. And it shows you how, how, how quickly football can change. Um, especially when we went 1-0 down in the second half as well. I really did fear for us. And, you know, to, 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 even to come up with something off the cuff, Bruno, fantastic weight on the pass. Like I said, to get us back in the game, he was, he was instrumental as well, Bruno. He didn't have his best game, but he's always there. He's always trying. The mentality was there to get something out of the game. And what I worry is in, in going forward with that mentality, we won't always get out of jail like that. But the main thing today was we had to get three points on the board today and we've done that. It's the Champions League. When, you look, when the balls were drawn out of this, this group, you look at it and say, this is a group we should be willing, let, let, let alone we should get out of it. And if we didn't win today, having to go to Atalanta away, having to go to um, Villarreal away, um, you know, having to play Atalanta at home, it was start to look really tough without this win today. So I'm hoping that what that win does, although the performance level wasn't there, I'm hoping that it spurs us on because against Everton here on Saturday 12.30 is going to be another difficult game. Rafa Benitez is going to come here, organise, they're going to know what to do and they're going to put us under pressure. So we have to be ready for that. Positives, Edison Cavani, Ronaldo saves the day. But for me, my man of the match has to be David De Gea. I said it at halftime when he managed, miraculously managed to keep it to nil-nil. David De Gea has come under so much scrutiny. Dean Henderson coming in, taking the number one spot. And he said, you know what? I'm getting myself back to training early. There's a lot of doubters on me. I'm going to prove why I'm still Manchester United's number one. And I think he's done that. To me, he's always been that. To me, he's always been that. And that, I've never changed on that. But a lot of people have. And that's what it's about. It's about opinion. But what David De Gea did is say, forget everyone's opinion. I'm going to show everyone why I'm still number one and get my best form back. And he, without David De Gea today, we're 3-0 down at half time. Simple, game done. It doesn't matter what Ronaldo does in the second half. It doesn't matter what Bruno does. It doesn't matter if Tellers hits a wonder strike. We'll be 3-0 down without David De Gea. So that's my man of the match. Let me know who your man of the match is. Smash a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. Peace.